Okay, welcome everyone to our August A to J Author New User Webinar. I'm Jessica Frank, A to J Author's Project Manager. Today we've got a webinar full of tips and tricks. So usually each month I try to have a tips and tricks section at the start of the new user webinar. These are things I've shown authors over the course of a month or things that have arisen in my use of A to J Author. This month I decided to combine them into a bigger webinar. So on LSE's webinar yesterday on their tech baseline, Glenn Rodden was mentioning that it's important to get the most out of the technology tools that you're already using. So this is all about getting the most out of A to J Author. I've broken the webinar down into four sections. First, we'll focus on pre-authoring, then interview drafting, then template drafting, and finally post-production. Most of these tips are meant to make your life as an author easier. I know the work of automating forms can be tedious, but we all know that the reward is high when we help self-represented litigants cross that access to justice chasm that is form, building, form filling. But there are a bunch of little workarounds or technology enhancements that can make the job a bit smoother. So let's talk first about pre-authoring. Pre-authoring is that phase before you actually get into the software. So you've chosen the forms you wanna automate, you have your A to J login, and you're ready to go. But wait. There's a step before you dive into the authoring tool that can make this more effective. That one, the tip then is to create a script or a storyboard before you move into the software. A storyboard is an, impart, is an important part of the process of creating a pro se friendly A to J guide to interview. The storyboard helps you to prepare for authoring the interview by organizing your questions, your steps, and all the variables you're going to, to need to associate with each question. It also helps you review your interview questions for plain language before moving to the authoring process. It can be referred to as a process map and it can be done in a variety of ways. So the most important part is to find the way that works the best for you and your development process. It involves making a list of all the questions that you need to ask the end user. So think of every question you're gonna need to fill out that form. You already should have looked at the form and thought of all the variables you're, need to, you're going to need to capture. Now you're thinking about the questions that have to go with those variables. Now you look at this list of questions you've made. Do any of the areas or topics overlap? If so, start grouping those questions together. The form doesn't have to dictate the interview, so you can group information like about the user's children, their spouse, their property together. These groups then form the blocks that will become your steps in your A to J guided interview. Then you want to combine the variables list with the questions list. So for example, the question is, what is your name? The variables that need to go with that are client name first TE, client name middle TE, and client name last TE. Now you create your storyboard. Your storyboard can be a list of questions and associated variables grouped into an outline format. That's what I prefer because I prefer outlines or it can be a flow chart of questions and variables, more of a visual representation. Either one of those works, you find the one that works best for you. Just have some sort of notes before you get into the software. One of the great things about A to J Author is that we try to allow authors to create interviews in a variety of ways. The tip then, if you are a visual representation person, you like that process map, that flow chart, instead of the outline, you can use the map tab for quick interview sketching. So you can have all the features of the pages tab, but you can use it to create this sort of flow chart outline of your interview quickly. So you can quickly add pages, drag them around, make the, the map itself within the software. You can connect pages via the three button options, drag and drop and move around, and then go back in and make the fine detail of the question once you have sort of that rough outline in place. So the map allows you to, to combine sort of that process map step that I just mentioned before with storyboards into the beginnings of interview drafting and actually creating the interview itself. Now let's move into the interview drafting portion of our webinar. Creating variables on the fly is one of my favorite newish tips for A to J Author. I've always found the process of creating all of your variables in the variables tab very burdensome. When the A to J DAP PDF templates came around, I leaned heavily into that because you can create your variables as you create the fields or the blanks on your template. Then you can reuse them in the interview itself. 
So it took away that extra step of remembering to create all of your variables in the variables tab before you started your interview drafting. I often would run into situations where I thought I had all my variables. I'd move into the interview section and then I would hit a field where I would need a variable and then I'd have to leave the question design editor, go back to the variables tab, create the variable, then go back into the question design editor. That was just an extra burdensome step that is now eliminated because of this create on the fly feature. So with this create on the fly feature, you get all the benefits of the variable design editor within the authoring pages themselves. So just like our um, learn mores and our other just-in-time learning features help end users at the point in which they need to use or to answer a question, this is like a just-in-time learning feature for authors. So anywhere you see this plus add new button, you can create a variable and automatically insert it into that section of the interview. It's available in the counting variable field section in the question info um, section of the interview drafting. It's in the field section, it's in the buttons tab. Sorry, I skipped one too much. Um, it's in the button section. Every place that you would need to insert a variable, you can create one on the fly and save you that extra step of having to go back and forth between the variables tab. Now, sometimes you need an end user to make a choice, but you wanna control their options. That's where this tip comes in. A to J lets you create a list of options to display to your, to your end user in two ways. You can either create an internal list where you type out the options for the end user into the internal list field, or you can upload an external list. This external list is an XML list that has the option values laid out for you in XML. Oftentimes, this is used when the list is longer or something you're likely to reuse among different interviews or different parts of your interview. So for example, a list of counties in your jurisdiction can be made into an XML list that you can use over and over again, or like a list of states. We've done the work of creating the XML list for the US states. This XML list is a file called us underscore, underscore states.xml, and it's found on our new author resources page on a to jauthor.org under the learn tab. This list displays the full name of the state to the end user, but saves just the two-letter abbreviation in the answer file. The cool thing about this US States XML list, though, is that it can be repurposed for other times that you want to display one value to the end user, but save another in the answer file. This came up recently where the form needed to know the person's eye and hair color, and the author wanted to display the full name of the color to the end user, but the form required an abbreviation on the actual form when it was printed. So I sent the author the US, XML, US States XML list and explained how they could edit it. So the part you want saved in the answer file goes in the quotation marks. The part you want displayed to the end user goes after that greater than symbol. So here I'd replace AL with the color abbreviation like BLU and change Alabama to blue. So the user will see a list with the word blue as their option, but the form will be marked with BLU as is required. The important part to remember here when editing the XML, especially for XML newbies, is to be very careful about not deleting a quote or a slash or a greater than symbol. Also, make sure your list has that select and the slash select at the start and the end um, of the list to make sure that you're explaining to the, or you're creating the list in the way that is um, proper for how it should be digested in the software. All right, so you've already used an external list like the list of states, for example, in one part of your interview and you want to reuse it in another page. Instead of re-uploading it, the tip is to just call up the file again in the new field you want to use it in. When you click into a field like external list, if you already have something like um, an XML file or an image or um, a video or an audio file, whatever it is, when you click into that field, A to J is going to display all of the relevant files that meet that file type. And you can either just click it and select it and pull it into this new field. Like here, I'm pulling in the list of US states again in a new page. Or you can type it out exactly as it is um, displayed so that you know that you're grabbing the correct file again. This saves having to re-upload in each new field or, again, um, typing the wrong thing and making, um, making an error that's not actually calling the correct file. This just eliminates some of that 
um, that air. Speaking of eliminating some error, this next tip is about using the autocomplete logics tool. So authoring is a lot like trying to juggle a bunch of different balls and plates at the same time. There's a lot going on and a lot to remember with all the variable and the page names. Oftentimes, the place where a plate or a ball can get dropped is in the logic section. When you're scripting advanced conditions, you have to be precise. You're overriding the, the software's normal branching commands with new go-to statements, or you're asking A to J out there to place certain data in a certain spot with set commands. That requires precision. Capitalization, spacing, and spelling of page names and variables all matter in this context. Many an author have accidentally added an extra space in a page name around a dash or spelled a variable name wrong when creating it. Then they try to use it in logic and they get errors. This autocomplete tool is meant to help authors at this critical juncture. When you start typing your logic statements and you use a quote, A to J author realizes that you're trying to call up a page and presents you with a list of all the pages in your interview. Then it starts to sort by the characters that you've already started typing to help you match what you're typing with the list of pages you have available. Same when you place an open bracket. It realizes you're trying to call up the variables and start sorting your variables by the characters typed. Then you can just click on the one you want, confident that spacing, capitalization, and punctuation is exactly the way you created it before, and that you're grabbing the correct variable or page. Now let's talk about tips and tricks related to template drafting. You may not know this, but we have secret keyboard shortcuts within the DAT PDF template creator. They're like the secret controls that you need within Mario Brothers that are going to help you beat Bowser in that final round. And our programmers put them in and claimed that they were intuitive, but I never remember all of them. So they also put in a cheat sheet for authors like me. And that's the tip. Use the cheat sheet to make full use of all the keyboard shortcuts. You can open the cheat sheet of DAT PDF template shortcuts by hitting control plus the forward slash button. I think on a Mac, it's command plus the forward slash. It's going to open the cheat sheet within the PDF template tool, and then you can see all of the options available to you and use them. And if you forget um, one that you want to use, you can open the cheat sheet again, review what shortcut you need, and then dismiss it. These shortcuts allow you to nudge things like boxes. Instead of trying to drag and drop a box into a precise spot, you can nudge them up and down and left and right. You can duplicate. You can select all the boxes if you need to move them. You can invert and you can delete selected boxes. So all of these shortcuts are there. The tip, though, is to know how to find the cheat sheet. The next tip is relevant for the fun time when you've completed automating a form, you've tested it thoroughly, it's live in the world, being used by end users. And then the form creator, oftentimes the court, changes a small part of the form, like the caption. So a line used to be in one place and now it is in a different place. All of the content of the interview is still materially good, but the form looks a little bit different and you need to change the underlying PDF to match the new form. In A to J PDF templates, you can swap the underlying PDF, but leave all of the automated fields in place. Then you just have to move the fields around to fit the new formatting position. So this leaves all of the hard work of automation that you've already done in place, but it lets you use this new PDF instead. So you don't have to redo all your work. You just move around the fields that have changed and adjust them here in the GIF, it's showing you can change the size, you can change the placement, but the um, all of the rest of the interview is still automated. All of your variables are still there and they're still connected to your interview as it was before. It's just swapping the picture of the form underneath the automated template into the new positioning. So now you've finished automating, but there's still a little bit work left to do before your A to J guided interview is ready for prime time. So here are some post-production tips for when you're testing and polishing your interviews and your templates. Testing isn't fun, especially after you've spent hours, days, and weeks automating these forms and creating the interview questions. But testing is a crucial part of the authoring process. We as authors know what's called the happy path, the path that's going to get you from point A to point B without any hitting any barriers. 
It's intuitive. We know the full, the interview inside and out, and we know subconsciously how to skip any of those problem points. But your actual end users aren't going to take that happy path. They're going to meander around the interview. They're going to answer questions in unexpected ways. They're going to hit all of those corners of your interview and test the boundaries. And so you'd rather know where all of these dead points and problem areas are before the interview is live, before you hit that end user with seven kids and multiple properties and multiple jurisdictions, whatever it is. And those viewer feedback emails start coming in with complaints about this isn't working. So one tip to make testing a bit easier is to use sample value fill. Sample value fill lets you put values in for all the fields ahead of time as you're authoring. Then you can make a one click in preview to fill out that page's information. This simplifies the typing and clicking through procedure that you have to do when you're testing or debugging a complicated page or a page that has a lot of information fields. So sometimes you wanna test the logic of something, but you don't wanna to have to retype for a brief example here, like full name. So I have on my sam in my sample value fields in the question design editor that Jane, Ann, and Smith are the middle name. And I know that I just wanna click through this interview quickly and test that, that logic works or that um, uh, full name logic works, combining middle name or last name, whatever, into um, a full name variable. So I have my sample values and I just click the fill button in preview and up pops all of those sample values and I can quickly click through the interview and really test the meat of the interview rather than just my ability to type things into the fields. It speeds up the testing process. So now you've created, you've automated, you've internally tested, but now you have to share it with your subject matter expert for them to review. But this person doesn't have an authoring account on A to J Author, or they don't have the time or inclination to click through a 200 page interview. This tip of getting the full report can help you here. So it shows everything in the interview and can be downloaded or printed to be read um, offline or out of A to J. You can essentially hand off your interview for someone to read through independent of the software. You can also use your full report to check the reading level of your interview, both in piecemeal, so page by page, of the grade level and the readability, or as a whole interview, as a final plain language readability checker. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for learning some things, hopefully, that you didn't know about A to J Author or helping you optimize your authoring experience. And uh, happy August. See you all next month.